Hujambo! Karibuni! Welcome to another episode of Cooking with Jesse. If you've guessed from the flags and from my post Wahili that we're traveling food wali to Kenya, you are correct. Today, I'm making an amazing Kenyan delicacy, pilau. Hop on, I'm certain you'll enjoy it. And we're back here with all of our ingredients for this amazing Kenyan pilau. So here I have my five tomatoes, two onions, two cups of basmati rice, some beef that I've cubed into little cubes. I have my oil. I have some cilantro. I have some salt, chilies, Irish potatoes, I love potatoes, and here we're about to enter our spices. So I have my clove, amazing spice, smells absolutely amazing. I have my black peppercorn that I've toasted and grounded, so this is what it looks like. I have my cumin that I've also toasted and grinded as well as my dry green cardamom seeds these are the pods and this is what happens when you bring out the pods you toast the seeds inside and you grind them and actually cardamom um, is an amazing source of calcium um, it helps lower blood pressure and it helps you breathe better so I love cardamom I have my Power duo, my ginger and my garlic, amazing twins in the kitchen. I have my cinnamon sticks. So if you don't have cinnamon sticks, you can use some cinnamon powder instead. But getting the sticks is great as well. And I have some smoked paprika as well as my water. So this is everything we need. Let's get cooking. Okay guys, so the first step is to make our pilau masala. So this is a pilau spice mix and the spices might differ from region to region in Kenya but this is the one that I find is a little bit more universal as in universal in the country. So I have my measuring spoons and let's get started. I have one teaspoon measurement here. I'm doing two of that for my ground toasted cumin. one tablespoon of my paprika just trying to get it one teaspoon of cardamom oh wow the smell coming from all of this is amazing one teaspoon of black pepper corn so my black, ground black pepper and one quarter teaspoon of clove oh wow i love the smell of clove okay so i take my mixing spoon and i mix this all together make sure everything is mixed and i now have my pillar masala next we get to chopping Okay guys, now it's time for chopping. I'm done washing my hands. You need to dry just to make sure it's not too wet. And now we can get chopping. So I have my two red onions, although they look purple <laughs> to me. And I'm just going to chop them into medium-ish slices over here. Careful with knives. <laughs> Make sure you don't hurt yourself. Okay, it's half one done. Half two. Just turn it over. And try not to look at it too directly or else you'll end up crying. <laughs> Second onion. 
chop, chop, chop. Choppy. I love onions. They're so flavorful. Okay. okay and now I pack it into one of my bowls just fit everything in here That should be it. Okay. Next up, I have my potatoes. So I have my four Irish potatoes. And I'm just going to quarter them, sort of. Like them in nice chunks. So that they could stand out. They can stand out in the pilau. Let's give them a nice cube, sort of chop. last half okay now I pack them back into the bowl guys remember that advice I gave you about not looking directly into the onion I'm paying the price for ignoring my own advice okay I have my three chilies because I love things spicy and I'm just going to chop the head off the ends too I'm just going to give them just a rough chop because I like chili chunks in my food I like them circular so just last one okay that is it just some water and I'm going to these chilies are not too spicy that's why I'm handling them with my hands but if you can't take the spice you can reduce them like I said I like stuff spicy <laughs> okay next up my thumb of ginger one of the dramatic duo that I always use in the kitchen ginger and garlic are amazing amazing I use them in almost everything unless the recipe explicitly tells you don't use ginger and garlic I will use ginger and garlic okay so I'm just going to like mince them cut them into chunks and then now just and this is just to get them into small chunks small manageable chunks so that we don't have chunks of ginger in our food. There we go. I think I'll just do one more. There. Perfect. Into my bowl. A small bowl. Ah. Now to the second of the twins, my garlic. I'm using five cloves of garlic, taking off the heads that I haven't already taken off, if they haven't already been taken off. Wrong end, okay. And now, chopping these as well. So I'm going to use the same method as the ginger, only garlic is a bit more responsive to that method. So I'm just going to chop them to strips and then I'll mince them with that method.
and now fun for the fun part ah there we go oops that's <laughs> spattering almost everywhere but i'm managing it chop 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 gather them together and rock and a few more times chop 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 Okay, it's fine. So my okay. And lastly, I have my tomatoes, my firm salad tomatoes, tomatoes used for salad. That's what I like. I've found easier to use for this recipe so just cut off the head cut them and I like them in chunks so cut them vertically and then just chunk them Okay, so that's the rest of my tomato done and I'll transfer it into our bowl. And now it's time to get frying. Okay guys, now we have our fire on, our pot. <laughs> and I'm waiting for it to get a bit heated which won't take long and in goes my oil just enough to cover the base of my pot okay so I'll leave that to heat for just a little bit and then we'll pour in my onions my oil is heated and my onions are frying and all the juices are releasing into the oils, the aroma is coming up, it smells amazing. And we're going to just fry these until they become caramelized and translucent. And it's going to take around three to five minutes. Yeah, I can feel, I can just smell everything rising up. Keep stirring every few seconds, every few minutes while it's caramelizing. Move it around a little bit. Okay. Okay, so we're getting there now. The aroma in this kitchen is splendid. Absolutely 
Amazing. Okay, so I'm, I'm enjoying this stirring game. It's taking a little bit of patience, but I think we are just about there. Okay, look at these beautiful onions. Okay, now to add the next thing. In go my power duo, my garlic and my ginger. There we go. I'm going to saute this, just fry this as well until the ginger, um, garlic and ginger become fragrant and aromatic. Oh wow, yeah. Yeah, that started becoming aromatic. Okay, now we have to move in with our cinnamon stick, one of that, our chilies in this so that we get the much needed spice and I also didn't mention this but we have our stock cubes over here and some people don't really like to add it but I decided that it would be a good addition so just this one got mashed up in the bowl so I'm just going to add that and then last one. I'm just going to stir fry this for a minute to let everything release. Around this time, I'll also add in my pilau masala. Let me get that. About a teaspoon of the mix that we made earlier. I like adding a little more, just a little. as well as our cilantro. In that goes. I'm going to fry this for another few minutes so all the spices just release together. Oh wow, the smell from this, the aroma. Yeah. Fry, fry, fry. This is such a combination of spices. Spices I would have never thought to use, but Kenyans know what they're doing. <laughs> okay. So in goes my beef at this point. So then I'll cook There's a little water with the beef for that time. I will fry this until it cooks it. Okay, so I fried this for about three, five to five minutes. Ten stuff is still in. And now I add in my tomatoes. I just got a whiff of cinnamon. Cinnamon. It's one of my favorite spices actually. I use it in a lot of things. But never in rice. And so this is a welcome addition to my cinnamon additives or things I can add cinnamon to. Okay, so I'll let this fry for another two minutes so it becomes a bit saucy. Fry, fry, fry. We're at where we want to be at. And now, in goes my potatoes. I find it very intriguing adding potatoes to rice. The double starchiness is definitely, definitely something that I'm going to work on. Okay. So now that's in. I am pouring in my water, pouring in my water, I'm putting in just enough to cook my rice, so pour in.
it covered as a bit. I'll leave it until it starts boiling and bubbling. Okay, so it's boiling and bubbling right now. This kitchen smells heavenly. And I, at this point, you guys can taste for salt and pepper. Just add to your taste. Okay, for me, this needs just a little bit more salt. Just a little bit. <laughs> Stir that in, and that should be perfect. And now, in goes my rice. So this is my basmati rice. It's been washed already. And I'm just going to just put it in. Just get every grain into the pot. Okay? And I will just turn it in. And basmati rice doesn't take a long time to cook. So this should be just cook it until your rice is done, you taste it, and it's soft. So about 20 to 25 minutes. Okay guys, let's check this out. Oh, this looks amazing. Let me have a little taste. Mm. This is on point. The flavors and the aroma from cumin and all the spices we use it's perfectly done so switch up the gas and get ready to dish because i can't wait to dig in and it's time to taste okay first spoon cheers mm. this is really delicious you can taste the cinnamon and getting hints of cumin and everything just melts amazingly together Mmm. You can also taste some caramelized onion and a hint of the garlic. This dish is absolutely amazing. You guys have to try it out. Okay guys, this is an amazing dish. Go ahead, try it out, make it for your family, and I'm sure they'll enjoy it for lunch or for dinner. And that's it. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button, hit the notification bell, comment, do all that stuff and follow me on all my social media handles. See you next time on another amazing episode of Cooking with Jesse. Kwaheri. <laughs>